Okay, since my fog watercolor demonstration seems to be the most popular right now, I'm going to do another one. Uh, rather than the fog being in the middle uh, and light on the top and bottom, we're going to do it the opposite. We're going to have the fog on the top and light in the middle. And just want to show you uh, my setup here while I... Here's, it's very simple. Just use a few brushes and clean container of water uh, for wetting the paper and another container for cleaning my brush. A row of uh, toilet paper that's wrapped around paper towel for cleaning up my brush. And I just have a simple palette here for you. This is not what normally what I use, but this just has four colors. And you can see, remember I said before, I don't waste color. That's uh, Antwerp Blue, uh, Burnt Sienna, Elizabeth Crimson, and New Gamboge. And you can see the New Gamboge is rather um, covered with blue. It's not very clear. And here's my paper. I already wet it once. And I'm going to now wet it again. Uh, there we go. I like nice and wet and wet. Just do it one stroke, another stroke. That's good enough. Uh, you can let it set for a while. Now, I'm going to add some gray for the fog. Should have had that all mixed up for you already. Now, you can make your fog any color you like green, gray, blue, gray. You know, I don't worry about it. Uh, I just do it until it looks right to me. I think we'll have it a little on the blue side. I'll add a little more burnt uh, sienna and that makes it gray. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to start up the top. Just see, add more and more. You'll see why I'm doing it like this. Normally I use a bigger brush, but this will do. Okay, that's good. Well, now we'll just have the fun. Here's where the fun begins. Uh, a, little, a little bit more of that. Those three colors make nice fog. All right, now that just looks black. But we'll see what happens here in a second. Lots of paint, lots of paint. And now the fun. Okay, here we go. Watch this. Turn it one way, then another. Let it run. See, people, some people think watercolor is hard. Not like this. And again, remember, keep your Kleenex handy so you can catch these runs on the side. Otherwise, they'll run down and through the middle of your painting and you're going to have a big mess. And now we'll let her flow. Just look at it go. Pretty nifty, eh? Again, I use 300 pound arches. This is medium. It's the most forgiving and the easiest to use. As I mentioned before, sometimes I use hot press or the smooth. It's not as forgiving and it's a little trickier to use. So for beginners, I suggest you stick with the, um, with the medium. And uh, here we go. And when it changes, don't fight it. I wasn't intending that to be lower on this side. I was kind of, uh, but it happens. So, but you can play around with it. 
and um, it's just getting it's just getting a little dry for me so here goes the squirt bottle that'll take care of that now it'll run just watch it run now again catch the runs here these runs those are the runs we don't want this gives a real nice even flow for fog now we'll let it run right down see how it goes and if you turn it one way then it evens it out if you want the rain you know how when you see rain coming out of clouds if you want that effect just do this and then dry it you see you get that rainy effect now this is just going the opposite what I want I don't want I wanted the light in the middle and I didn't plan on that happening but it did. Now here's how to get rid of that. Just add some more water in the middle. And see how that took care of that? Now I'll catch these runs here. Now I got it darker on the sides, lighter in the middle. I should say the corners. But I want this more uh, darker over here. So I'm going to. And I'm going to make this a little browner. I'll just put this here. I just. This is just nifty. I just discovered. You want to see what I'm doing? So I'll just add a little more burnt sienna. That'll make this a little browner than the other, and it'll, and uh, which with adding the brown, it actually becomes a green gray over in this corner. And we'll add some more water on my brush. It's really soaked, and just drop it in there. And now we can move that around. See the difference? Now watch it drop. Pretty nifty, eh? Turn it another way. That'll give it that smooth look. And it's getting a little dry again for what I want. Is there another squirt? Pays to have a good squirt bottle. Don't have one that has. Um, get a good one. You don't want blobs of water coming out. Okay, so now we'll let her go this way. Time to catch more drips. I'll turn it this way so you can see better. Okay, come on there. Taking a little longer than I planned. But there, we have a nice even fog look now. So we're going to leave that part. Now we got to. I like I like doing the fog with the water. So now we're going to put the uh, fog in the water. You know, or add the water. So again, three colors. Or these are mainly the two colors. I'll just throw a little touch of alizarin and crimson in there. And that's uh, water should be darker than the sky. I'm making this a little bluer. There we go. Okay, that should good be good. And how is the water on the bottom? We need some more. We need some more 
wetness on the bottom here. This is there we go. So now it'll flow. Now I'll just load her up. Now remember, water is like a mirror, so the, this has to come up higher. The reflection has to be higher here. Okay, so here we go. We'll uh, start here. And we'll come up here. And there's going to be the water line right there. Okay. Now, catch these drips. And here we go. We'll make this flow. Now this is going to move some up here, but not as much because it's drying. Now, a little more water. I want this to travel faster. There we go. It's a nice even mist. That's what gives it that nice flow. Okay, let's bring her down here so they'll meet. Oh, you need to see that. This way, and this way. Now it's important to leave the light. And I don't like this quite. An, oh right here you to be careful that you when it's nice and wet it'll still blend if it gets a little dry then you're going to end up in trouble be careful you don't do the uh, windshield wiper effect like this you'll have a crooked horizon okay let's you know what this is turning into seascape I want to make waves that's what I want to do I just have the urge to make that into waves so Remember I said, Dave Weitzman says, let the painting paint itself. Well, it's telling me to make that a wave. So I'm going to add dark here. This is going to be the wave. Okay. Now the fun part. Of course, if this doesn't work, you'll never see it, right? Now, take your Kleenex. We want to have the wave coming down like so. Look at that. See, there's the break. And here's another one coming. And remember, like it yesterday when I did one? Don't put this back on. Take a clean Kleenex. And dab it. And now I have a clean spot here. There. See how that wave's breaking? And then I'll break it over there. And look how nice that is in the in the sky. So we're gonna go across here like so. And I want the wave to break more down here and there. And a little bit here. There. How's that grab you? <laughs> Remember what I said? Let the painting paint itself. That's what Dave said. And we want a little bit of light in the front. So we're going to take one sweep right across. Like that. 
and a few little wipes here. Now, take my sucker brush, we'll call it. It'll suck the the rest of the paint down in there so we don't have a hard edge. How's that? Okay, now we'll take my palette knife and we'll scratch. Oops, that's, look at that. Forgot to clean that off. Shows you how imperfect I am. Okay, maybe it's too late. Oh, there we go. See? You get your palette knife, you can scrape that out. And we'll do some here. Give that break. And we will put in... This is difficult working around the around the uh, camera here. There we go, give you the waves in front. Now we're going to dry it. dry back it was really dark in the shade and that's why it's important to load the paint to it because uh, when it dries it's not near as dark as it looks now we're going to add we're going to have that green break in the water You know how the when the waves break now so we're going to add some water on the top of the wave here clean water add some clean water here so that it'll flow you can watch that it doesn't do some back runs on you and now we want some green coming over here which is just my yellow and my uh, Antwerp blue. Give us that break. A little more water. And we're going to have to do a little cheating here. And I'm going to add the dark underneath. So you have the dark under the curl of the wave. That brings it to life.
Now, remember I said we're going to have to do some cheating. Now, there's two things we can do here. Um, we can use um, gesso or a little white acrylic or a little white pastel. Uh, no, I wasn't planning, or uh, I wasn't planning. This is a. Uh, oil pastel I wasn't planning as on, on this happening but my gut feeling said make it a wave so I did I know you know some people may frown on this because we're not doing pure watercolor I'm not overly worried about that this is this, this results is get what you want you just call it a mixed media if that's called cheating well I'm a cheater you blend that a little with your finger because this is the foam from the previous wave so now you know uh, first-hand experience What you start out with doesn't always mean what you're going to end up with. Now this is a uh, normally I use uh, soft pastel chalk, and I wasn't planning on this happening. So that, but make sure you have all your gear around. Well, of course I'm running a video here, so if I wasn't, I'd run and grab some other stuff. Okay, let's uh, bring this wave breaking rolling. If you really need you really need to study waves to know how they work in order to make them look right. It doesn't have the right roll, it doesn't have the nice feel. Okay, let's just try a little more on top of this, see how that looks. Break that up. to do see that that little bit of green really sets it off doesn't it there we go we can add some of that in here too and a little bit down here a little bit of that green just sets it off see how that livens it up brightens it up and if you go too much you can always just add a little more white let's dry it getting there now. Now if I used um, gesso, gesso really works nice. It would uh, be whiter, brighten it up. Now the other thing we could do, and I'll decide whether I'm going to do that. I, I think this has gone on long enough. There's the wave. Now the other thing we could do is add uh, the rocks and Peggy's Cove Lighthouse in there and I'll decide after whether or not I'm going to do that but in rate now for now we're going to stop you know you have to know when to stop now I'll put the mat on and there we go so what turned out to be fog hmm, kind of foggy but not exactly what I had in mind but I hope this has been a help to you, and it's one thing you'll learn.
Let's bring it up close so you can see. It doesn't always turn out the way you expect, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. You have the right to change. So thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful to you. Catch you later.